Welcome to the virtual worship service at Greater Mount Zion Baptist Church, located in Chesapeake, Virginia at 2201 Wingfield Avenue. We are the church in the heart of the community, with the community at heart, seeking to transform the world through the word and our deeds. On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Travis T. Judkins and First Lady Kiana Judkins, we'd like to thank you for joining with us today to watch but most importantly, thank you for joining us to help us worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that something is said or sung to enhance your journey with God. Again, whether you are a first time guest or longtime member, we appreciate you joining our worship service this morning. Enjoy, and we invite you to tell three friends that Greater Mount Zion Baptist Church is streaming live.
Good morning, Greater Mount Zion. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. These are our morning announcements. In the book of James, chapter 5, verses 13 through 20, we are instructed to pray for the sick. Currently on our sick and shut-in list are the following members. Mother Charlotte Tripp Ford, Mother Helen Hood, Mother Lily Harvin, Sister Ora McPherson, Deacon Tony Ruffin, Sister Regina Lewis, and Sister Mary Simmons. Please keep them in your prayers. And during this season, we all need prayer. Join us every Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. for early morning prayer from the comfort of your own home. Just call the number listed. Also, in lieu of Bible study on Wednesday evenings, we're also using the same number for corporate prayer at 7 p.m. Just a reminder, after you announce yourself, please mute your phone to eliminate feedback. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you on the call. The Greater Mount Zion Baptist Church family expresses deepest sympathy to Deacon Tony Ruffin and family on the loss of his father and brother, Rudolph Ruffin and Rudolph Ruffin Jr., Please continue to pray for comfort and peace for his family. Thank you. I deeply appreciate and am grateful to the family of Greater Mount Zion Baptist Church from Beulah Mellerson. In appreciation, I just wanted to take the time to say thank you all for the cards, prayers, concern, and compassion shown to me and my family during the loss of Chuck Taylor, brother-in-law to Deacon Wanda Bailey. It was greatly appreciated during our time of bereavement. From Rochelle and Vashon Taylor. Because you give so much, a shoulder to lean on, a sure helping hand, patience and kindness for each small demand. Smiles that are caring, words that are wise, a world that is seen with compassionate eyes, a heart made to comfort, encourage, and cheer. It really is better just knowing you're near. In my darkest hours, it felt so good to have a church family like you guys. Each day that goes by while you are praying for me and my family, I repeatedly thank God for my church family. Thank you all for everything, Sister Ashley Biggs and family. The Fellowship of Deacons' points of contact for urgent matters during this time of mandated seclusion are as follows. Deacon Clifton Wood, 477-2233. Deacon Hazel Blunt, 620-5953. And Deacon Keith Taylor, 717-6774. We are praying for each of you, and it is our sincere desire that we all remain well. Please allow a portion of the following scripture to provide a source of inspiration. Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Much appreciation to all of our volunteers who helped with the Mercy Chefs groceries giveaways here at Greater Mount Zion Baptist Church during the months of September and October. You are appreciated. Just in case you didn't know, Financial giving can be accomplished online at greatermtzion.org. Just click on the online giving button and choose option A for e-giving or option B to be directed to the Giveify portal for Greater Mount Zion. If you prefer not to have to navigate to the website, you can download the Giveify app to your smart device. Additionally, if you already have the Cash app, our code is $GMZBC. If you have no desire to haggle with electronic devices, an envelope and stamps still work. Please note the mailing address to the right for mailing contributions. Now if you feel like getting out of the house, the stewards are available to receive financial offerings at the church each Sunday from 10 to 11.30 a.m. This Tuesday, November 3rd, is the day where we all get a say in the country's leadership. If you haven't already taken advantage of early voting, be sure to get out and vote. Additionally, 
we have a special message from Vice Presidential Hopeful, Senator Kamala Harris. Greetings, everyone. I want to thank you for all you are doing in these uncertain times to build community through faith and shared strength, to fight for equity, opportunity, and justice. In the book of Isaiah, we are told, if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noon day. No one knows this better than our communities of faith who are serving our brothers and sisters in need. And to me, this is what faith truly looks like. From the time I was a little girl singing in the church choir with my sister Maya, I have always believed in a loving God, a God who calls us to help the hungry and the oppressed. That is where I learned that faith is a verb. It lies in our actions. And that means using our voices to help usher in the noon day after this dark night. We must vote and we must vote early. And you can verify your registration and find your polling location at IWillVote.com. So please make a plan to vote by writing out when, where, and how you will get it done, whether by mail, by Dropbox, or safely in person. And please remind everyone you know to do the same. Together, we can restore the soul of our nation. God bless you, and God bless the United States. Be advised that the church office hours for the week of November 2nd are as follows. Wednesday, November 4th, from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Copies of today's announcements will be posted on the church's Facebook page or contact the church office to have a copy emailed or mailed to you. Also, copies of the Daily Bread and Sunday School books are available. Please contact the church clerk if you desire a copy. We would also like to extend blessed birthday wishes to all those born in the month of November. May God grant your wishes according to His will. If you have a birthday in the month of November and your name is not on this list, Please contact the church clerk. The ordinance of Holy Communion will be corporately celebrated today following this morning's service. This concludes this week's announcements. Please remain vigilant in your efforts to stay safe and let us continue to pray one for another. May God bless you. I want to welcome each and every one of you to our virtual worship experience for this is the day that the Lord have made and we are to rejoice and be glad in it. This Sunday is more than just the first Sunday uh, in the month of November, but this month marks the 46th church anniversary of the Greater Mount Zion Baptist Church. Uh, with all that has gone on during COVID, where we have spent more time out of the church than we have in the church, I thought that it would be a wonderful opportunity to look back and reflect um, and to hear a message for, from our pastor emeritus, the Reverend Dr. Uh, Donald Fulton Taylor, who spent 23 years of labor, um, uh, and because of him, much of what we have become and what we are is because of his labor of love and devotion to the kingdom. So this Sunday, we are going to look back and hear from the Reverend Dr. Donald Fulton Taylor as he blesses us with the word of God. One of his last messages, um, in the pulpit, what he shared with us during our 45th pastor, uh, church anniversary. And I think that what he shared then is just as relevant uh, during times such as these. So after the Sermonic selection, the next voice that you will hear will be that of our pastor emeritus, the Reverend Dr. Donald Fulton Taylor. May he be blessed and may we be blessed through the preaching of the word of God that ultimately we would see Jesus.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Sister Josephine, just take your time. Take your time. May God just continue to bless you as he's done all these years as you return unto him. Just a bit of the praise for the goodness that he has done in your life. God bless you. Good morning, church. I am extremely honored to be here with you this morning. And I thank God for the pastor who was kind enough to extend the invitation and to you who were kind enough to come in here. I ask that God will continue to bless you real, real good and continue to pour into your basket all that you stand in need of. To the pastor, I'll say thank you. For the time that I've known him, he has been quite a man. I think we are very, you notice I said we, are very fortunate to have this man as our pastor, aren't we? <laughs> he is a man of great character, a man of great vision, and a man of great love. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we do thank you for this opportunity to stand once again in this holy place and return unto you, O God, just a bit of praise, a bit of thank you for all that you have done in my life, for my life, and the life of my family, my dear, darling wife. We thank you, dear God, for everything, for bringing us safely here, and for having here a son who makes it his business on his own to make sure that dad is A-OK -okay when he gets to the city. We ask your blessings upon this church, these members, each and every one of them. And we pray that you will continue to enrich them in your love. Amen. Amen. I would like to spend just five or six hours Keith said, all right, he bought his lasso with you this morning to just join with you and say, don't we serve a great God? We serve a God that is the Alpha and the Omega of our lives. We serve a God who is able to do anything for us within his province. So we thank God for that and we thank God for the invitation once again that brings me home. And I pray that you will continue to be completely supportive of your pastor and my dear friend and his new bride. God bless you. When I when we came the last time, Patty, she was they were just getting ready to tie it. And we came back, you tied. God bless you. 
and heaven smile upon you. Our lesson today is centered on the scripture found in Psalms 121. verses 1 through 8. I will be choosing as my topic for today help for the journey as we now join together with the message for the day starting with the Psalms 121 one through eight. The Lord has done mighty things, and in all of his doings, he has been mindful of us, his children. He has said, Come into my house and serve me and I will make everything all right. The lesson today is taken from Psalms 121 verses 1 through 8. If you'll turn with me What psalm did I say? 121. 121. Hear you now and participate in the reading of God's holy word. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not, what? Slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is, what? Thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smoke thee by day. And what? The moon by night. No other moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. What kind of evil, church? All, all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Thus ends the reading of the lesson. You may be seated. The Psalms are divided into five books. Each book is comprised of a number of Psalms. As Moses gave to the Israelites the five books of law, David gave to them the five book of Psalms. Psalm 121 begins 
This psalm is called a song of degree. That is, this is the song the worshipers would sing as they made their way to Jerusalem to participate in the three great annual feasts, Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacle. It tells of the dangers of the journey and the help that God provides along the way. With this in mind, it is plain to see that this is a pilgrim song. A pilgrim, as you will recall, is one who travels from a distance to visit some sacred place or shrine. Now church, may I remind you this morning that we are all pilgrims. Our pilgrimage began the very moment that we received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And it will continue until we step out of this life and into eternity. My, what glories await us when we probably, when we probably, I say probably, get home. Along the way, however, there are dangers lurking all around. There are thieves that would rob us of peace, of joy, and of victory. There are problems that would strip us of the glory. As we look at the Psalms, let us, since we don't have all day, let us concentrate beginning with verse 8. In this verse, the psalmist reminds us that the Lord will keep us while we are here and that he will continue this ministry throughout eternity. As is a priceless, endless guarantee this is simply a reminder of the wonderful doctrine of the security of the believer in Jesus. We are preserved, what? Forever. The Psalms are divided into five books. And each book is comprised of a certain number of songs. Yeah. Psalm 121 is located, as we say, in book 5. This psalm is called the Song of Degrees. This is just in the song the worshipers would sing as they made their way to Jerusalem. I have in my mind's eye a picture of the folks going up to Jerusalem, carrying baskets of food to sustain them while they're there, holding hands and singing the hymns of Zion. Now may I remind you this morning that we are all pilgrims. Say pilgrims, church. Our pilgrimage began the very moment we received Jesus as Lord and Savior. And it will continue until we step out of this life into eternity. My, my, my. What glories. Say glorious, church. What glories are going to meet you there. With this in mind, it is plain to see 
that this is a pilgrim song. Now may I remind you this morning that we are all pilgrims. Pilgrims began the very moment that we received Jesus our Lord. That's when our pilgrimage began. And it will continue until we step out of this life into eternity. My, what glories await us when we probably do get home. But along the way, however, there are dangers lurking all around. There are thieves that would rob us not only of our monies, but of peace, joy, and victory. There are sins that would quench the fires of God in our soul if we just sat there or stood there and allowed us. Let us join the psalmist for a few moments as he tells us about a source of help who is greater than any problem you might have. In these verses we will help for, get help for our journey and we want you to notice the truth is viewed from the, through the eyes of God. This first verse in our lesson is not a declaration of hope, but rather it is a cry of despair. The psalmist is telling us that danger is lurking in the hills above and is waiting for an opportunity to pounce upon the weary traveler. And when this happens, where can the pilgrim turn for help. The psalmist amply answered his own question, reminding us that God is our help. Remember, church, He is our creator. The psalmist knew that His help would not come from the hills. In times past, the hills had been places of idolatry and false religions. No help could be found in the high hills or among the gods worshiping in those hills. Neither fellow travelers, friends, nor family could make a difference. The psalmist turned his attention to the Lord. He knew that the real source of his help was Almighty God. He isn't referring to a friend or an ally, but to the creator of the universe. Let this mind be in you. God has the power, church, to make a world, and if he has that kind of power, surely he has the power to make a way. What a truth. Our helper is none other than the very one who stood on the edge of nothing and made everything with the power of his word. He's able to help you and me, and all you have to do is turn to God. You know, church, we live in a time when there's just so much trouble everywhere. It's not only on our jobs, it's in our homes, it's on the streets, it's even with the interaction we have one with another. Trouble is everywhere. We need to remember that the Lord has never made a house that fell. I cannot take you someplace and show you a house that God built that fell down. So if God can build a house to stand, you know God is able 
to allow you and to strengthen you to stand. But we need to realize that he has lifted us up out of the miry clay of this world and has established our goings. We are constantly being reinforced and helped along the way. God is our confirmer. What is a confirmer? A confirmer is one who tells you this is what you think it is or it isn't what you think it is. But it's one that tells you what you think you got and what you got may not be the same. God is our confirmer. This verse tells us that the Lord will not allow our foot to slip. God knows how easy it is for us to slip into sin and into discouragement. Would somebody out there say sin? Sin. sin? Would somebody, I didn't hear that. Would someone out there say sin? Sin. What in the world is sin? Sin is what causes you sometime to wonder, Lord, I've devoted my life to you. I've devoted everything I have to you. And yet every time I take a step, it seems that I go back to. Wow. But God is on the job. We need to remember that God never made a house that fell, nor a foundation that crumbled. There will be times when we feel like giving up and what? Giving in. But we need to realize that God has lifted us up out of the miry clay of this world and established our goings and our coming. He is our constant helper. Not only does the Lord know that it is easy for us to slip in and out of trouble and circumstances, he also knows that it is easy for us to sleep. There are times when we grow weary and we want to rest. There are times when we let down our guard and get caught napping. I don't know about you, but I've been on jobs at times when I've had myself a good nap. <laughs> But not so with the Lord. Our God does not nap. Our God does not nap. He doesn't tire. And he doesn't fall asleep at the switch. Therefore, there is no need for you to worry. There is no need for you to fret. There is no need for you to lose one moment of sleep at any time because of this problem or some other such problem. God is ever awake and is constantly on the job. Now back in the days of World War II, and I see some World War II veterans out there. I don't know whether they World War I veterans are out there or not. <laughs> Civil War veterans, I'm not sure. But this must we know, that he is, God is, our constant help. Not only does the Lord know that it's easy for us to slip, he also knows that it's easy for us to sleep. You see, my, my, my friends, a lot of times the problems we get into isn't that we always slip down in the problems, with the problems we have, but sometimes we sleep when we shouldn't be napping. The Lord, though, he is ever awake, and every action of, on our behalf he doesn't get worried. 
Not only that, he doesn't tire. He doesn't fall asleep at the switch. Therefore, there is no need for you to work. I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care what someone tells you. I don't care what you're going through right now. I don't care how long you've been going through it. Don't let nobody tell you God is not there for you and with you. God is ever awake and is constantly on the job. What a blessing to know that we can depend upon God. I remember a hymn we used to sing right here. Great is thy Oh, some of you know that, don't you? Great, say it, y'all. Great. Great is thy what? Faithfulness. Listen, when is it? Morning what? By morning. New what? My goodness, he gave me mercy yesterday. And he turned around today and gave me some more. What kind of God do we serve? We serve the Alpha and the Omega God. He's not a makeup God. He is the God of creation. He knows that it's easy for us to sleep, but he also knows that he is ever awake. Every active and on our behalf, he doesn't ever get weary. Therefore, there is no need for you to worry. There's no need, no need for you to fret. There's no need for you to lose one moment's sleep at any time because of whatever problem you're going through. God is ever awake and God is constantly there with his ears cocked asking, what do you need, my child? Back in the days of World War II, the Germans were bombing, bombing London all night, every night. After one very terrible attack, the people of London began to search through the rubble, that which was left after the bombs had hit. Search through the rubble, looking for the dead and the injured. After a while, all had been accounted for, but one old grandmother, a Mrs. Smith, they searched everywhere for her, and finally, someone found her bedroom, in her bedroom, asleep in her bed. They were shocked and asked her, Mrs. Smith, how could you sleep with all those bombs dropping all around? Here is her answer, which I think is priceless. She said, well, the Bible says that he who keeps Israel never Say never, y'all. Never. never slumbers nor sleeps. I decided there was no use in both of us <laughs> staying up all night. So I just went to sleep and left it in the Lord's hands. You see, God protects us from the elements. The psalmist speaks of two possible sources of harm that were common to the ancient soldier. One was sunstroke, a dangerous condition where the body became overheated and shut down. This condition could be fatal. The other was moonstroke. Moon, say moon, y'all. 
believed by the ancients to be just as dangerous. Moonstroke, unlike sunstroke, did not affect the body, but it affected the mind. Say the mind, child. Mind. In ancient times, mental illness was thought to be caused by the moon. Just stick with me for a while. Some, some of you are, are much older than I am. But I just want to say that, that, that there is such a thing that I heard of moonstruck, sunstruck. Moonstroke. Listen to me now. Get your pencils and papers out. Get your typewriters ready. Moonstroke, unlike sunstroke, did not affect the body, but it affected the mind. In ancient times, mental illness was thought to be caused by the moon. This is where we get the word lunatic. Luna. To refer to someone who has a mental disturbance. The whole idea is this. While we are subject to attacks in our lives, we are also subject to attacks in our body and in our mind. However, just as God will guard us against the attack of the enemy from the outside, he will guard us from the attacks of the enemy on the inside. Whether the attack is open or secret, whether it comes by day or in the darkness of night, be sure that God is aware of where you are and of what is happening, and he will always be there to protect you, to guard you, and to give you the resources you need to stand in the day of battle. God is our strong tower, yes. our greatest gift in troublesome time yes. is having time to flee to a great God. He will cover you with his feathers, so to speak, and under his wings you will find refuge. In our readings this morning, in verse 7, we are preserved from evil. God is able to do all kinds of things from heaven. These bodies are much like volcanoes. At any moment, the sin that is pent up in us can burst forth and commit any sin imaginable. You know, we look at each other and someone gets in trouble. And you say, why in the world did you do that? What in the world were you thinking about? Why did you go in there? You know that, you know they didn't want you in there. Why did you go in there in the first place? And when you saw they weren't going to wait on you, why didn't you just turn around and walk out? But there are troubles that are beneath the covers. And we have to learn that if we persevere with God, everything is all right. But when we persevere where there is evil, evil a lot of times will win out. Uh -huh. At any moment, the sin or the evil that is pent up in us can burst forth and we will commit any sin imaginable. This flesh which we carry around is utterly depraved. What do you know about depravity? We are supposed to know there are certain things in life that we ought not do. No one has to tell you. When you get up and put your clothes on and head out the door, 
There are certain things in life that you should not do. Your mama and your papa told you, don't do this or that. And I'm going to tell you, we used to go, they say, if you get in trouble, you better find a way to get out of it. Because when you get home, I got something waiting for you. You see, we have to understand that we have guardians in the house and outside the house. And our parents who have gone before us and who have been through trials and tribulations, they're able to see the mountain tilting that you didn't even know there was a mountain there. They're able to see that you're tired and weary from the journey that you've been on, even though you didn't think they were even looking. They're able to tell you, come on in and sit down and let me get you a glass of milk or a glass of soda and just sit and rest a while. You see, mamas and papas are precious. How many of you did not have a parent? <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you that we had two strong parents. Yes, Mama and Papa were something else. Yes, and when Papa spoke, he didn't say it but once. And when things didn't go right with me and I went to Mama, Mama said, well, what did your daddy say? Have y'all been through that? Yes. What did your daddy say? And whatever your daddy says is what it was going to be. We are preserved from evil. These bodies are much like volcanoes that we live in. At any moment, the sin that is pent up in us can burst forth. And we will commit any sin imaginable. This flesh which we carry around is utterly depraved. How can we ever hope to live for God? The answer lies in the Holy Spirit. When we are saved, saved doesn't just mean, doesn't mean perfect and free from sin. He moves in. God moves in. When he comes, he comes in with all of the resources that he needs. And when God comes in to take charge of something, I'm here to tell you that you have a master mechanic in your house. Right. Have you noticed how easy it is to sin? First of all, how many of you in here have, have never sinned? <laughs> Put your hand up. All have what? Sin. All have what? Sin. All have sinned and come what? Short of the glory of God. And the Lord is there even then saying, I know you're wrong. You know you're wrong. But come unto me. All ye who worry and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. These bodies we carry around are much like volcanoes. At any moment, the sin that is pent up in us can burst forth and commit any sin imaginable. A lot of good people have left their homes, gone out into the street with no intentions of doing anything wrong, and have found themselves before the evening is over locked away in a jail cell because of what they did. But God has preserved us from evil if we only listen to him. These bodies are much like volcanoes at any moment. The sin that is pent up in us 
can burst forth and commit any sin imaginable and some sins you can't even imagine. This flesh which you carry around is utterly depraved. How can we ever hope to live for God, you say? The answer lies in the Holy Spirit. Say Holy Spirit, y'all. Holy Spirit. When we are saved, saved doesn't mean perfect. When we are saved, God begins to take a look at you and tell you that I don't think you want to go that way. You should go this way. Now, whether you go or not is something. Have you noticed how easy it is to sin? It requires no effort at all. Right now, where are you sitting? You can sin. If a purse is on the seat and nobody's looking, you can sin. Right now, these things we call lips are there ready to tell the biggest lie or the greatest truth. You see, sin is so easy. It comes in so many different forms. We are preserved, though, from evil. These bodies are much like a volcano. At any moment, the sin that is pent up in us can burst forth and commit even greater sins. The flesh which we carry around is utterly depraved. How can we ever hope to live for God? The answer lies in the Holy Spirit. When we are saved, saved doesn't mean that nothing else is going to happen. Where what it really means when we are saved, that we have the knowledge of knowing that if we try to do right, and if we try hard to do right, and walk in the light, that God is there and he will look out for you. Have you noticed how easy it is to sin? It requires no effort at all. I go in the store and I ask the clerk, I say, Mr. Say, I, have you got a minute I need for you to explain something to me about this and so? And he brushes me off brushes past me and goes on about his business. I go to another one. I say, mister, can you help me with, with this? I, I need some help, some understanding. Could you please help me with this? He might shrug and say, I don't know, you have to ask somebody else. But you see, the devil is funny. The devil knows exactly how much each of us can stand. Y'all don't believe that, do you? And the devil is busy right now turning up or turning down things that will cause you to be otherwise. But thank God for God. We are preserved from evil. These bodies are much like volcanoes. At any moment, the sin that is pent up in us can burst forth, and if we go to God at that moment, when we see it has happened, and cry to God, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner at this time. Have mercy on me, Lord, and direct my steps and uh, 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 turn my head around, Lord that I won't sin before thee. When we are saved, saved doesn't mean you're perfect. It means that we're just free from the burden of sin. He moves in, and when he comes, he comes with all the resources that he needs to overcome temptation and to say no to sin. Have you ever noticed how easy it is to sin? 
Have any of you ever sinned? Or when you were about, after you got baptized, you don't sin no more? How many of you are completely sinless right now? I'm not putting my hand up. <laughs> How many of you know that sometimes when you want to do right, when you want to do right, the devil is right there. He's got his eyes on you. He's got his temperature, his thermometer on you. He has a way of waving whatever it is that you're looking at to tempt you. And before you know it, instead of following God, you're following the way. But I'm here to tell you, God didn't expect you to be perfect, but he does expect you to be saved. Let us look to God, the author and the finisher of everything. Let us look to the Father and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. When we are saved, it doesn't mean we are perfect. It doesn't mean we are free from sin. What it means is that I'm going to work hard not to purposely sin. But every now and then I'm going to miss the mark. And isn't it nice to know that when you do miss the mark, that God is still right there for you. Amen. Have you noticed how easy it is to sin? It requires no effort at all. You don't have to do nothing, really. We're born with a bent in that direction. All of us have within us the seeds for wanting to sin. And so we thank God for God. Have you noticed how easy it is to sin? It requires no effort at all. Why? We are born with a bent in that direction. You see? In that direction, we like it. We are good at it. We can tell a fast lie and get away with it. We can pick up something that doesn't belong to us, nobody look and put it in our pocket and walk out with it. We can tell stories on our best friends or on our worst enemy that aren't true. And you see, this is what happens to you when you begin to depart from God and walk your isolated way. Have you noticed how easy it is to sin? It requires no effort at all. Why? One, we are born bent in the direction of sin. Two, and we find out that sin is a lot of fun. But sin has consequences. So we say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Preserve me from where I am. We are preserved for eternity. We find out that the psalmist says to us that the Lord will keep us while we are here. And that he will continue this ministry through eternity. One of the good things we have going for us is that God does not abandon us when we err. When we make mistakes, God does not withdraw from us. Come unto me, he says, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. Come unto me, all you who are feeling the burden of sin, the burden of being ignored, the burden of joblessness. Come unto me, give me a chance, and I will walk with you. Ours is a priceless 
endless guarantee. This is a simple reminder of the wonderful doctrine of security. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go together into the house of the Lord. I am grateful this day that I have the promises for my journey. What about you? Do you have in you the promises that God has for you? Have you taken the time to get off your pouting and get on your knees and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Have you gone to God and said, God, I, I thought I'd lick this thing, but now I find out that I'm on my way to even a greater sin. Do you know that God is ready? You know he's able? God says, let your light shine. He didn't say it has to be a big light. Let your light shine. It doesn't have to be a big wattage. Let your light shine. It doesn't mean whether there's somebody looking or not that you see. But let your light shine. And when you let your light shine and it falls on the works that you're trying to do that are good, God will reward you for that. And when God rewards you for something, let me tell you, my friends, you have a real reward. I'm grateful this evening that I have God's promise. What about you? I'm glad that I do not have to look to this ever-changing person out here that I got to be a certain way for them to like me today. And I got to be a certain way for them to like me tomorrow. I have a God who is constant. I have a God that says, I know you're not perfect, but I know there's some good in you. And if you try, and that's all he asks, just try, I will be with you. I'm grateful that I have these promises for my journey. What about you? I'm glad that I do not have to look to this ever-changing thing that's in me. There is a great God in heaven who is interested in everything that happens in my life. My burdens are his burdens. My problems are his problems. My worries are his worries. My duty is to trust him. And his duty is to take care of me. He's always performing his duty and I must ask, somebody, ask myself, am I always performing mine? How many of you understand that there's more that you could do to help yourself, even in your worst condition? There is a God that rules heaven and earth. And hear him say this, come unto me. All ye who labor and are heavy laden. Come unto me, all ye who are carrying heaven's burdens and who are lost on the highway who don't know whether to turn east or west, come unto me and sit with me and talk with me and I will be your God and you will be my people. I know a God that sits high and looks low. I know a God who is able to tell you, yes, there is a balm in Gilead. I know a God that can say, that will say to me from time to time, Donald, get up from where you are and go and do your best and I will be with you. 
Isn't it nice to have a God like that? Isn't it good to know that when you get up from your seat and you go from hence to death, when you get up and go from here, no matter what takes place, that God is right there with you. Do you know that you have to do a lot? You have to declare yourself that I'll have no more to do with God through Jesus Christ for him to depart from you. You have to say that and mean it. Otherwise, no matter how dark it is or how dirty the, your badge may be, no matter how you've done things that you ought not have done, you, you have overlooked things that you should have looked at. You've been where you shouldn't have been. You, you, you've said what you shouldn't have said. Go to God. Yeah. Say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And the Lord will take care of you. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. In the declining years of my life, as I look around me, Can't kick as high as I used to kick. But I can kick high enough to walk. I can't see as well as I used to see, but I have a pair of glasses. I can't separate all of the things of taste that I used to be so discerning about, but I can still swallow. You understand what I'm saying? I know that there is a bomb in Gilead. No, I don't know where Gilead is. But I know this, that I serve a God who is a map maker and a map breaker. And I know that whatever it is, and wherever it is, God will make a way for you. God bless you and keep you here. Once again, I want to thank Dr. Taylor uh, for the words of wisdom uh, that will live with us eternally. Uh, and I want to thank him especially for there are many people who preach the gospel. There are very few who have the heart of a pastor. And for him to have done the work and have had the vision that was far ahead of his time to do the work that he did at the Greater Mount Zion Baptist Church, he should be applauded. And I thank God for him and that the Lord still has him here with us. And to Dr. Taylor, our love to you our thanksgiving to you, and ultimately to God be the glory for what God is still doing in your life. Well, it's the first Sunday, uh, and always on the first Sunday, we remember the sacrifice that the Lord made for us. And Greater Mount Zion, after 46 years, I think that it is most appropriate that we remember uh, the blood sacrifice of Calvary, uh, the final atonement of Jesus and for all that Christ has done for us and is still doing for us. And so it was on that night in which our Lord was betrayed that he sat with his disciples, giving them both bread, representing his body, and also giving them wine, the fruit of the vine, representing his blood that was shed. Throughout the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. He said that on that night, he said that one of you will betray me. They said, Lord, is it I? He said, the one who has cast his hand into the dish with that of mine is the one who will betray the Son of Man. He said, it is better that you would have never been born than to have betrayed me. It was then that he gave the bread and he gave of the cup and he blessed it. He gave thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat ye all of it. A 
Likewise, in the left closest to the harp, the wine, the fruit of the vine, representing his blood, he gave thanks as he blessed it, and he said, take, drink ye all of it. They collected all of the fragments so that nothing would be lost. They arose and they went out to the Mount of Olives to sing a hymn. Beloved, I look forward to seeing you uh, again on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Make sure that you share with your family and your friends that the Word of God is being preached here at the Greater Mount Zion Baptist Church. And when all of this has settled, when the smoke has cleared and the dust has settled, I look forward to seeing you in this sanctuary. If this ministry is a blessing to you, make sure that you sow a seed. Uh, you can utilize our e-giving, our cash app, or our Givelify. Remember, if you sow the seed, God will give the increase. Well, that's the, all that I have to say on this morning, but I want to introduce you, if you don't already know him, to my friend Jude, and he would say it like this, now unto the God who is able to keep us from falling, who has presented us faultless before God's divine presence with exceeding joy. I searched all over trying to find another God like this one, unable to do it, so I say to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, be majesty, be dominion, honor, and power. And if anybody ever asks you, how long will God be God? Now henceforth and forevermore, amen.